Ephesians 6. And we're going to do 18, 19, and 20. These are the verses we'll get through this evening. Okay, we're going to finish it up next Wednesday. <laughs> we'll try anyway. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18, 19, and 20. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak so Continuing with the armor of God and the sword of the Spirit, our attention is now directed towards another vital part of our spiritual warfare, which is prayer. And when I'm talking about prayer, I am talking about real worship-centered, faith-based prayer uh, that essential and unfortunately it is one of the great weaknesses in Christianity always has been always has been go to Matthew 26 Matthew 26 pick it up at verse 36 We'll go down to about 43. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go yonder, or while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then say at the end of them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. 44, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. And he came again and found them asleep again the third time. Go to John chapter 21. John 21. First three verses. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto them, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Now, you got 11 of the original 12 were with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay. Uh, Judas Iscariot isn't there. Christ took Peter, James, and John with him and went off separately to pray. Three times he went back to them and found them asleep all three times. Okay, and 
He's praying desperately to the Father. This is the night before he's going to be crucified. He says, can you not watch with me one hour? One hour. In John, we've got seven of the original remaining 11 are in that passage. Now, the same three that went along with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane are three of those seven that are there. They went out fishing all night long. I guess it matters what's important to you. And this is what is so very typical of the majority of believers. You know, could you not pray with me one hour? You know, I'm getting I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go and be crucified. They knew this, they knew what was coming. He told them already. Three times he comes, can't, can't you stay awake long enough and pray with me, please? But they go out fishing all night long. See, what's really important to you is eventually going to come out. It's going to come out in your conversation and it's going to come out in your actions. Talk about sport events, yeah. I mean, people go to a sporting event, boy, and they'll scream and yell their fool heads off in excitement and enthusiasm over a sporting event, but they'll sit like stone statues in church service. No shouts of amen, or praise the Lord, or that's right, preacher. <laughs> you know, eyes are as dry as an Arizona summer. I mean, you might think a smile would crack your face. <laughs> well, they sit on their hands rather than lifting up holy hands in praise to God Almighty because they're afraid of being accused of being a charismatic. <laughs> yeah. And even when they're under conviction from the Holy Spirit of God, and and and, and yes, folks, I can I can. Okay, when I'm standing up here, I'm looking out here. I can tell when you're under conviction. All right, I see it. You know, and then their their hands will dig like claws in the back of those chairs through there, rather than respond to the urging of the Holy Spirit of God and come down to the front and pray. I see it. I see it. Now, I miss seeing folks come to the altar. I'm frankly, you know, and, and this changes come this Sunday. Uh, I've been given altar calls because no one comes. <laughs> no one comes. Too much pride, too much self consciousness, I guess. Now, we're told to pray. With all prayer, always. All prayer, always. You know, praying ought to be like breathing. It ought to be natural. It should be unconscious. It should be automatic. And it should be necessary. I mean, I don't care how long you can hold your breath. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to breathe. <laughs> Your body will force you to breathe. You know, and what did God, our prayers and our prayer lives were the same way. You know, we have such an incredible privilege of being able to come to the Father at will. Any time of day or night, we can be in the presence of God Almighty. And how much time do you spend at the throne of grace? Watching something that is very seldom done these days. Watching means to take a watch. Okay? 
and to pray during that time. A watch is a period of two hours. Uh, the watches were typically meant the night time, sun, sundown to sunrise, uh, two hour periods beginning at six o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the morning. So six to eight, eight to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 2, 2 to 4, 46. Those are the, those are the watches of the night. The last watch, mm -hmm. well, that's where we are in time right now concerning the second advent. We're in the last watch before the dawn. <laughs> Watching. It says all perseverance, well, to persevere is to go on without quitting, irregardless of the obstacles or the difficulties, to persevere. This is how the Lord expects you to pray, with all perseverance. Daniel was commanded to not pray, and if he did so, he'd be cast into the lion's den. Daniel prayed anyway. And he was arrested, as was promised, and he was cast into the lion's den, as was promised. And every one of those big cats lost their appetite, got locked jaw, and hid with fear before the man of God who prayed while he was there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were ordered to pray to a false idol. And they said, we ain't going to do that. We don't care what you do to us. We're not going to pray to a false idol. If we're going to pray, we're going to pray to God Almighty. You know, Nebuchadnezzar got furious and threw him into the palace furnace after he overheated the thing <laughs> and killed him and for throwing him in. Not only did they not burn, but their prayers so pleased the Lord that he decided to join them yeah. in the furnace where they had themselves a good old time shouting and praising. I mean, folks, you know, that's where real <coughs> revival comes from. That's when real revival comes in the midst of the fire. Okay. That's when the Lord steps down to be with his praying saints. It's in the fiery furnace. Supplication for all saints. That word supplication means entreaty. Humble and earnest prayer in worship to petition earnest request. That is the meaning of supplication. And this is what we are to do to the Father for all saints. Now, if you're a born-again believer, you are a saint of the Lord. Not every believer deserves to be called a Christian. But every believer is a saint of of Christ, whether they behave like one or not. And we all need the prayers of everyone else. All of the saints need your prayers. Wednesday evening is prayer meeting first. And that's why I do it that way. Then Bible study. And sometimes we ought to just be gathering together just to pray. I seldom do it. I seldom do it because most folks would just get 10 minutes in and start having to try to hunt for something to pray for. But see, that's why I have you write everything down. Okay? I, mean, I got a lousy memory. If I don't write things down, I won't remember. 
15 minutes in, so I'm going to start getting fidgety. 20 minutes, most will be up off their knees looking to see who is still praying. 30 minutes tends to be about max. Never mind an all night prayer meeting. I know we've tried. I can only think of one time, one time. I believe it was a New Year's Eve that uh, and we were going to have an all night prayer meeting. And I think five of us stayed for the entire night. I miss. I miss those five. I've said it before. I've talked about Wes and I used to come. Uh, I mean, Kathy can be my witness and testimony on it. You know, we try. You know, at least once once a week, he and I come to, to pray. Sometimes too. Occasionally, we were really moved three times a week. It didn't happen often, but we'd come and we'd pray. And we'd, we'd go up and down these aisles and we pray at every seat for every person. I miss that. We need to be praying for every member of this church all of the time. We need to be praying for our missionaries all of the time. Your saved loved ones and friends all of the time. You need to be praying for the other churches that you know of. For that matter, pray for the ones you don't know of. All supplication for all saints. Verse 19. And for me. And for me. I need your prayers. I covet your prayers. When the Lord calls a man to be a preacher, whether it's a home pastor or a foreign mission field or perhaps a traveling evangelist, uh, that man automatically <laughs> is marked by the devil as a special target of attack for destruction. And the Lord knows it. He knows that that happens. He does not choose men lightly for that assignment. But neither is he going to cancel <laughs> the assignment just because the man called does not want the duty and the, the hazard pay <laughs> that comes with it. Ask me how I know. Now, frankly, preachers are not special. They are not special in the body of Jesus Christ. It's just one member of the body. Every believer is predestinated to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Every last one of them. Every believer is expected to be a Christian in every possible way and to grow and to mature into a fully capable soldier of Jesus Christ to be an ambassador for the king to be a faithful servant of Jesus Christ and to be a deadly adversary to the enemy Preachers aren't special in that or unique in that. They may be some of the more visible members of the body, but they're not special. They're not unique in that respect. But preachers, quite wrongly, are held to a different standard by the majority of the rest of the body. They tend to expect, expect far more out of him than they will of their own selves. 
And because of that, because of their own penchant for mediocrity, all that does is just places more attention on the preacher by the devil. You know, they know they can cause him to fall. They can cause him to quit. Then it creates an excuse of hypocrisy and failure for others. Well, look what that preacher did. <laughs> I'm not, you know, what bubble less than something. You know, but, you know, they use it as an excuse. And I know, I have seen it. Verse goes on to say that utterance may be given unto me. I cannot preach without a voice. You know, that's why my throat gives me issue every Sunday and Wednesday. It's called opposition. <laughs> that's all that is. That, I, that utterance may be given unto me. You know, one of, one of the useful things I remember being taught at Howell Anderson, Jack Howell's taught about how to take care of your voice. You know, can't preach. You don't have a voice. Now you can write, I suppose, and things, but you know, it's awful hard to be a preacher in a pulpit if you don't have a voice. Utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. Boldness is something that is needed in preachers, needed in Christians. Meekness and humility are, are just as essential, in some ways even more so, but sometimes a preacher must be bold whether he wants to be or not. That's because he's often called upon by the Lord to speak up and to speak out against things that are going on within the body that are going to cause shame, are going to cause hurt feelings, and might even make folks angry. Now, frankly, it's not hard to go out there <laughs> and be bold, personally. I mean, that's me. Uh, it's not hard for me to be bold when dealing with the filth of the world when you're out in the world. Uh, but when you have to be sharp with people you love, that can be hard. The sheep whom the Lord has put in your care But the pastor who will not rebuke or chasten when necessary is doing the flock a disservice when he does not do so. It goes on to say to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now the mystery of the gospel is found in John chapter 1 and 1 Corinthians 15. Go over to John first. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The saint came for a witness to bear witness of the life that all men through him might believe. He was not that life, but was sent to bear witness of that life. That was the true life, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, 
nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 Corinthians 15. First four verses. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and stand, and excuse me, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried, and then he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the mystery of the gospel right there. The divine became a man in order to save mankind. And by his own death, burial, and resurrection, whosoever will, by the grace of God, simply by exercising faith in what God had said and by asking for that gift, receive eternal life. That is the mystery of the gospel. God became man's savior himself by becoming a man. Verse 20. Verse 20 says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds. Paul's bonds were the physical bonds of mortal men at the time that he's writing this. But, he also, as are we, was also, we are all bound to Christ to serve him. We are his ambassadors. Therefore, we are to speak, as it says in the second part of the verse, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Therefore, we are to speak boldly as we ought to speak. As we are the representatives of Jesus Christ, the lost humanity, as well as to the powers that be in this present evil world. The ambassadors are sent to foreign powers. Well, this whole world right, right now is a foreign power whose god and prince is the devil. And we are here as the representatives of Jesus Christ. Not just the man, but to the devil too. And we need to remember that. And we're here to remind him <laughs> that his time is short and that the rightful king is going to be coming soon mm -hmm. to take what's his. All right, we're going to stop there for this evening. We're willing to be able to finish up the last four verses of Ephesians <laughs> next week. Are there any questions, any comments, anything that anybody needs me to repeat for them from this evening? <laughs>